Hi guys, it's Angie the Craft NATO, and we're here today going to do a little bit of whip and chat, but like we always do before uh, I do my whip and chat, I'm just going to share with you what I have been working on for the past week. It's been a little over a week since I've done a whip and chat, so I've gotten quite a bit of things done or in progress since I've shown you last time, and I got a little bit smarter. Um, I usually show you uh, my current and finished projects before my whip and chats while I'm sitting in my chair and I don't really quite have room um, to set everything to the side before we get started working. So I decided today I'm going to do this in two parts. I'm in my craft room right now and I've got everything laid out that I've been working on this week. So I'm going to show you that and then I will go out to my working area in the living room and my recliner and we'll do our whip and chat. So what have I worked on this week? The first thing I worked on is I made this beautiful blanket for my granddaughter for her birthday. Her birthday party is tomorrow. Lila will be two years old tomorrow. And so I made this gorgeous blanket out of the same um, chenille uh, Bernat Velvet Plus that I made Nate's uh, blanket out of. Um, it's just a simple double crochet pattern and I just did it in stripes and I didn't I just um, connected as far as the skein got that's where I ended it I didn't you know like end it at a row I just went to the end of the skein and connected it there and I think it looks fine and um, so it turned out beautifully I love this yarn I, I absolutely adore working with it I wish and I luckily I've got plenty of requests for more blankets of this yarn it is so soft you guys but it's very heavy once it's, you know, once it's crocheted up into a blanket, it is very heavy. So I made that blanket this week. It didn't take me very long at all. This is, I'd say, about a... I used eight skeins of yarn, and it's about, I don't know, I'd say five feet by four feet blanket, five by three and a half. Um, but it'll be perfect for her. She's two... So it'll be a perfect little on the couch blanket for her to have to snuggle up with. She loves a snuggly blanket. So that's for her for her birthday. I'm also working on this baby blanket um, using Bernat Baby Blanket Stripes um, yarn. And it's just another, just a simple double crochet. Um, this was actually yarn that my daughter had left over from a blanket that she had made for a friend's baby. And I thought, why let the uh, yarn go to waste? She wasn't going to return it or anything. She had two of these big cakes left. So I decided I would make a um, just a little summer blanket for my great nephew. He is one. No, he's not even one yet. He'll be one in September. And I thought it'd be a nice um, lightweight blanket for summer. It's very, very soft material, but it is rather lightweight. So... Um, just working on that, just as, you know, something something to do when I don't feel like diamond painting. So I've been working on that one. Also trying something a little bit new, and this is a little bit of a fail for the moment. For this, I'm using this um, Yarn Bee Chunky Velvet Knit, Chunky Knit Velvet, and it is very, very thick. It is um, like almost like a rope of... of chenille that is braided together um, in multiple places and I am learning how to and I am um, hand knitting this so it's different than arm knitting with arm knitting you end up with um, you end up with holes that are much much bigger than this and I did try arm knitting one and my holes were just too big and this material was too heavy and it just really stretched out too much and the holes were just too big. So I'm trying this with, with hand knitting and it went beautifully. It looks great. I really, really love the way it looks, except you'll notice that over here on the side, way, way back here in the beginning, I dropped two stitches. So I had dropped these two stitches, so therefore... I have to take this all apart and redo the entire thing, and I am not happy about it. But um, at least I can see that I like the way it's turning out, and I'm doing a decent job as far as keeping my loops even. 
it's really easy to do. Um, it's easiest if you're like sitting on a bed or sitting at a table someplace with a flat surface. And all you do is, um, there's plenty of tutorial videos out there. I'm not going to pretend to be any kind of an expert at it because I'm certainly not. Obviously, if I screwed it up. Um, but you just, you lay it out and you have your loops all pointing forward. And then you just pull your um, yarn through and make a new loop. And you keep, you continue doing that all along the line. And you want to keep your loops about the same size. And it, it's beautiful. It works up. It's, it's so pretty. It's so pretty and it's so nice and it's so easy to do. But like I said, I screwed up and I dropped that couple of stitches way at the beginning. So now I have to take it all apart. And this was, this only took me about, and I got quite a bit done. It only took me a couple of hours to get that far. So it's not like I have like a huge amount of time invested in it where I'm going to be, you know, it's not like eight hours or something like that. So that's good. Um, but that's what I've got going on with that. Maybe I'll work on that because I'll tell you what's going on. It's Saturday night. I know it's a weird night to be recording a whip and chat. But what happened is we got a real bad storm today. We had tornado warnings and everything. And a real bad storm came through and took out our internet. So I have no internet connection, which means I can't watch any lives. I'm missing Mindy's live again. I am um, can't watch anything on YouTube. I can't, can't do anything. So the other thing I've been working on this week is I have been working on my one of my um, miniature kits. I've been working on the Kathy's Flower House kit. It's the one that looks like a greenhouse. And I'm just using this old Panera bread box. It was it worked out nicely to keep my little pieces in. And I've got just several pieces of furniture built so far. So I built that cabinet and the drawer is supposed to be pulled out like that to put things in and I made this little easel with a picture and just I'll just show you inside the box there's all kinds of different pieces of furniture so far that I've made this cute little basket all kind bird houses I made a rug for the floor oops I didn't put the rug on the floor yet made a rug for the floor oh and I'm dropping it and the door so I've just been working on that just a little bit here and there I haven't been really um in the mood for miniatures lately I don't know I don't know what my deal is I've been really in a crochet mood as you can see by what I've gotten done with crocheting so I've been basically just crocheting and diamond painting so let's look at what I'm doing with diamond painting I do have a couple of finishes but I'll show you my works in progress um, I, right now I've got four main whips that I'm working on. I know that seems ridiculous, but if you knew how many I have kitted up actually that are technically whips, this four is nothing. So the first one I'm working on is Beautiful Death Colored by um, JoJo's Art. And I am working on this for a friend of mine's hunting blind um, to go in. She has like a very elaborate setup hunting blind. So I've done these sections so far. I got pretty far on it. Um, I've only worked on it, I'd say, like a day I did these sections. So not too bad, but I need to get this done by next Saturday. So I need to get busy working on that. So that's the first whip that I'm working on. The second one I just started last night, and it only because... I was in the mood for a square and I was in the mood for a colorful square. So I started working on Out West by Mad Art Studios from Diamond Art Club. The other one was from Diamond Art Club as well. And I've just gotten these two sections. Well, this section isn't completely finished, but I've gotten almost two sections completed. And I just love the colors in this. And I just really needed some, um, with the other the other three whips I have going are very, two of them are very like blue black and the other one is very, very red, which you're going to see. So I needed some color variation in my life. So I pulled this out and yes, I'm still working on where the fun never ends. I just haven't pulled it out. It's so cumbersome and big. 
Um, I, I've just been really in the mood to work on something a little bit more manageable of a size. And I still can't motivate myself to work on my Christmas in July, um, that red truck. I just can't can't make myself do it. I don't know why. Um, I, it just All those ABs are killing me. So the third whip that I'm working on, and this one is one that you saw me unbox just the other day, is Fauna by Lilani Joy from Die Moon Shop. And I really wanted to get started working on this because I wanted to test out Die Moon Shop's new canvases and drills. So I can tell you that I absolutely love the new canvas. I love the new symbols. They changed their symbols from being, you know, all kinds of crazy symbols to just letters and numbers. So I'm really enjoying that. It's the symbol clarity is a lot more clear than it was in the past. I'm really enjoying the new canvas. I have noticed a little bit, and this is, you know, my this is my problem and not their problem. When I'm working, I kind of lay my arm on the canvas like this when I'm working, and I have had a few uh, drills come up on my arm. I correct that. All I do is I take a couple of release papers and put them underneath my arm so that I'm not leaning directly on the painting, and then I don't have that problem. But the drills are a much higher quality than what Die Moon Shop had used in the past. They are the um, the smoother topped, the more they have the more more facets. I think it's like the other ones were like 16 facets, and these are the 32 facet drills. And they did come pre bagged. I did kit it up, however, and. Uh, they are, they're really nice. I, I'm really, really enjoying working with these drills a lot more. And like I said, the canvas, I love having a soft canvas because I'm a hard presser and I like that little bit of give that a soft canvas has when you press down on it. It's, that's just a matter of, matter of personal preference. It doesn't make a kit worse or better. Um, just completely personal preference. So, but that's, I'm, I'm enjoying this kit, and I wanted to see all of these ABs in action. All of the black that you see on this is all AB 310, and they're just beautiful um, ABs. I love, they have like a blue and green hue to them, and I really, really love the way they are, they are looking. So I'm really having fun working on this one. I'm not working on it for any, you know, particular reason other than that. I wanted to give the new, um, the new version a try and see how it stacked up against the older um, kits that they had. And I have to say that I'm very, very happy with all of the changes that they made. Um, I'm not... I don't care about this legend being on the canvas. I mean, I could take that or leave it. It doesn't you know, doesn't kill me one way or the other. I don't use the legend once I've got myself kitted up. Um, so I, you know, doesn't matter to me that it's there or not, but I'm sure for some people that's going to make a difference to have the legend on the canvas rather than to have the walking legend like they used to. So that's how far I've gotten with that. I've gotten, you know, three, four sections done on fauna. Uh, by Lilani Joy. You know, if you added up all of the sections that I've gotten completed this week, I could have completed a, a, a decent sized diamond painting. But no, I have to keep, you know, starting new ones and bop from one to the other to the other. The fourth one that I'm working on this week is uh, Plan of Salvation. Oh, this is a JoJo's art. I, you know what? I thought it was, but then I second guessed myself. So, um, yeah, Plan of Salvation, also by JoJo's Art from Diamond Art Club. And this one I am working on for Nate. Um, he wanted a space diamond painting, and so that's what he's going to get. So it's working out really well. It's a square. You can see I've gotten, I've gotten one, two, three, four, four and, four and a half sections done. Um, so I'm really liking the way that this is working up as well. And it is, you know, as always, I'm not having any problems, never do with Diamond Art Club. And it's just a lot of black, a lot of black and a lot of multi-placing. But I think it's going to look fantabulous when it's finished. I wish you could see the whole thing. and I didn't have those release papers on there, but I do. So... <laughs> 
So that's that. Um, but yeah, so that's where I'm at with that one. And then I do have a couple of finishes for the week. So I see, I really do finish things. So I um, finished just one small, um, and it really wasn't so small. Uh, there's a lot of drills on it. I finished this uh, special drill partial, and I have to say this is probably one of my favorite special drills that I've ever done. I just love the rainbow of colors in it, and I love the pattern on it, and I, it was really fun to do. And um, you can see it has a ton of special shape drills as well as rhinestones, and it was really a fun one to work on, and I like it. So this is one that is not going to go in the scrapbook. This is going to go in a small frame um, in my craft room because it's one of my favorites. You know, and it kind of, I've got that whole sun and moon theme um, of, with special drills that I've been doing. It kind of goes along with that. I mean, not really, but way it kind of has that aura so uh yeah I'm gonna say it does and this one's gonna go up in my craft room but my big finish and it really isn't that big of a finish because I think it's only like a 45 by 57 um is Mistress of Evil from Medusa the Doll Maker and Die Moon Shop so this is one of their older canvases um, so you can tell the edges aren't scalloped and surged. It doesn't have the soft back. There's no legend on the canvas. These are the older drill types that are um, the, the uh, eight or 16 facet drills um, that came in the little teeny baggies, you know, like with 200 drills per packet that you had to open each, each packet. And I, um, I never, I was fine with what they had. I mean, I was not, you know, I didn't have any complaints about um, this kit or any of the quality or anything with this kit. So this worked up just absolutely fun. It was a great one to do. It really was. It was a lot of, believe it or not, there's a lot of confetti in there. Um, I think that that's something that makes this even at this small size looks so good is that there is a ton of confetti in this diamond painting and it really helps the image to really pop off the canvas because even at that small size look at how great that looks i just think it turned out amazing and it's a beautiful piece of art um and so this one is definitely going up in the craft room very happy with the way it turned out and it was just an absolute joy to work on i um both, uh, I've only completed two of my Die Moon Shop canvases so far. I have more, but I've only completed two, and I've been very happy with both of them. So, um, yep, that was my finish for this week. Plenty of drills left over. I had to um, kit this down before I did a post review on it or before I showed you guys, but I had plenty of drills left over uh, for every single color. That was not a question at all. Um, so I think you can trust me and I didn't need to show you, but I needed to kit it down so I could start on out west because I really wanted, I needed some color in my life. <laughs> I did this one and Plan of Salvation and Beautiful Death Colored and those are such dark, uh, dark diamond paintings. I just needed some color. So I finished this and I kitted up out west and got that started. So that's the last thing that I was, have been working on for this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause you guys for a few minutes and get myself set up. Um, I'm not sure which whip I'm gonna work on uh, for our whipping chat, but uh, you'll find out in just a couple seconds. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, hi guys, I'm back. And I have to tell you that was not a few minutes for me to move to my chair. That was almost an entire week, so the last part of the video or the first part of the video that you saw with my completed works for the week that was um on last saturday today is the previous or the following friday july 30th i sincerely apologize um for the delay um so i'm just going to show you what i've been working on for the previous you know six days since I have uh, talked to you and shown you what I was working on. Then we'll get into the whipping chat. We'll talk a little bit about why I've been MIA and um, 
yeah, we'll just get into our regular, regular whip and chat. So first thing I have been working on is I did talk to my mom and I showed her just the picture of the image anticipation of the day ahead by Chuck Pinson, which you all saw in an unboxing a few days ago. She absolutely fell in love with it. So I went ahead and kitted it up and got started with it on Tuesday. Today's Friday. And I've managed to get five sections done here on the bottom row. So there's it's six sections across on the uh, per row. So I managed to get five out of the six sections done on the bottom row. And I know it's really difficult to see because we are back out in the recliner in my favorite comfy chair for doing whip and chats. So it's a little bit difficult to show you guys all uh, of it in one view, but that's what I've gotten done so far. So I'm pretty proud of the progress that I made on that. I'm gonna try to get this across over to the couch. So apologize for showing my armpit there. I've gotten quite a bit further on um, Fauna, my Dye Moon Shop uh, order that I also unboxed last week. So I'm finished with all of these sections and all I have left to do are the center and then the upper portion so I'm almost halfway finished and the fox is starting to come together his face and his eye and it's looking really good it's a lot of red you guys a lot of red and you know I'm really regretting that I didn't maybe move around a bit because what I'm going to be left with at the end is all of this black AB in her hair so this is all that black AB, and it is be a beautiful AB. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if you can see some of it in her shirt there. Um, if you can see the way that sparkles, I just love the, um, the way that it looks. But gosh, I hate placing ABs. Uh, you guys all know that uh, if you've been around for a while. If you have it and you're new to my channel, welcome and thank you for joining me. I'm happy to have you here. And this is a little out of character for me to have been, you know, missing and vacant for so long. I, for uh, months, I was posting a video every day. I've not been able to keep up with that schedule lately and we'll get into a little bit more on that in just a few minutes. But that's another thing I've been working on. I also did finish um, uh, Beautiful Death Colored by JoJo's Art by Diamond Art Club. Um, I completed that and I can't show that to you right now because it is in the process of being framed. Today's Friday, Jeff's home from work. Today, uh, working on the kitchen, the cabinets came in today. Yay, finally the cabinets are here. So he is home working on the kitchen and uh, the Beautiful Death Colored is a gift for my friend um, who is, I, I'm gonna, it's for her to put up in her deer hunting blind up north and we are going up to visit them tomorrow. So uh, I would like to take that with us to give to her. However, I do have a video that I'm gonna post tomorrow that shows the unboxing of it along with the completion of it. So um, you'll get to see that in its finished state tomorrow. So right now, I had to kick Jeff out of the house so that I could do this whip and chat. So he uh, is making that frame for me and he is um, going to Home Depot to get the paint for the kitchen. And so I just have a little bit of time while he's out and about um, to do that. And the other thing that I unboxed in that unboxing with Beautiful Death Colored is another Diamond Art Club and this is what we're gonna work on today. And I'm almost finished with it. I've got just barely, not even a section left to go of Life is What You Bake It um, by Lillian Val from Diamond Art Club. And it's just a real cute 30 by 38 centimeter round diamond painting kit with 34 colors. And I started this yesterday and I am almost done with it. And this is a gift for my sister. Um, I mentioned that in the unboxing video as well. And I think I've mentioned it before. Her hope as she retired was to someday open a bakery. And hopefully this would be, this is one of those, you know, chalkboard looking um, prints. So hopefully this would be something that she might want to put up in her shop. And 
I just wanted to do something small. I um, was working on anticipation of the day ahead. I had finished Beautiful Life or Beautiful Death Colored and working on, you know, such larger paintings. My big projects are such larger paintings. I just really felt the need to do something and see instant results. So I started this yesterday afternoon and I'm almost finished with it. So that's what we're going to work on today. So um, let's just get started and I'll tell you all a bit of what I'm using. I'm using my same old, same olds. Um, using my, um, <laughs> I just can't, I just fall back on it. My trusty dusty diamond art club pen and my star or tray and my, um, just pill looking, uh, 56 grid storage containers that I get from Amazon. I've linked these before in, um, I'll link them in the description. That's not a problem. My release papers are also from Star or um, that I order through Amazon. So that is what I am working with today. And let's just get started. And um, I just want to start again by apologizing um, for not really being around. I have been having, I'm going to be really upfront and honest with you guys. Um, I've been having a hard time. I've been going through some stuff. This is, I, I generally don't share a lot of personal um, details. I mean, I talk about my family and stuff, and that's all well and good. Um, but I usually don't go into a lot of my, you know, I have some health problems and things like that. I don't usually go into things like that on my channel. I don't know, I like to keep it kind of upbeat. This is kind of my, oh, and now the recycling guy's here picking up the recycling, so we're gonna have to listen to his loud truck. I apologize. And <clears throat> I don't know why I have a frog in my throat all of a sudden, probably because I haven't been talking a lot lately. I've been really, even to my family, I've been really just keeping to myself, and I have felt just very, very out of sorts and very much not like myself and very down in the dumps and down in the dumps to the point where I haven't been able to pick myself up out of it. I have had very little interest in doing much of anything craft wise or otherwise. Oh, one thing I forgot to show you guys and I'm not going to get up and get it, but I also have been working this week on um, a miniature, one of my miniature house kits. So I did do some work on that. But as far as it goes, I have done much, much less in the past week than what I normally do um, in a week's time. And I mean, yeah, I still have finishes and I still have progress that I've made um, with diamond painting and with other crafts. And I have crocheted a bit as well, but I have not been nearly as productive as what I normally am. And I can't quite put my finger on what exactly is going on, um, but something, something's happening and it's been debilitating. It's been... Um, I've taken naps during the day. That's not like me. I've been going to sleep really, really early in at, in the evening. We're talking like 8.30, I'm going to bed. That is just not like me. That's not, I'm usually someone who struggles with insomnia, if anything. And I um, have been just sleeping a ton. And it's, it's, getting to the point where it's getting really concerning to me and I can't, as much as I'd like to just kick myself out of it and talk myself out of it and, you know, get back to normal, I just haven't been able to do it. Um, this afternoon is the very first time that I have even felt like getting on here and doing a video. I, um, Luckily, I have had videos pre-recorded of unboxings, and I still have more that are pre-recorded um, of unboxings that I've been able to post up to share with you guys, but um, I just have not had the motivation or the desire 
or the ability, like literally I've been unable to force myself to do anything. And it's been, it's been really hard. It's, it's been, this has been probably, you know, this happens to me every once in a while. Um, I do suffer from, I, I will share that I do, um, struggle with bipolar disorder. I've been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and I am medicated for it. And I do stay fairly, um, moderate, um, as far as my mood and, uh, manic episodes are concerned. I, you know, don't really have a problem with that anymore. Um, but I'm having I, what I believe is just kind of an extended um, depressive episode and there's no reason for it. And I can't, but I haven't been able to bring myself out of it. So when I felt this afternoon like I might want to get on here and do this whip and chat, I felt like I really, like maybe this was what I needed. Um, the fact that I felt like doing it, I felt like maybe this is, this is the little push that I needed to get myself back into um, my normal swing of things. I've been really late with responding to comments. I know this. I apologize. I... Um, I have some things that I need to mail out to people and I know this and I apologize and this is not like me you know whatsoever this is not indicative of my normal um, personality or my normal way of being I don't know if you know perhaps it's time to revisit my medication or if this is just a part of the way it goes and I just need to roll with the punches and let it pass it's almost I, I mean I'm not sad about anything I'm not upset about anything but it's almost like it's an it's an inability to even care it and it's so it's so weird. It's just, it's just weird and just an odd feeling of, of anxiety of not really anxiety, but in a, I can't settle. I just, I can't settle on anything. I'll sit down to do something and I just can't, I can't settle on anything. And it's really, 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 really frustrating. So uh, it's been this way for probably about a week and a half now, and I am hoping that I'm hoping that I'm kicking out of it. Um, like I mentioned, we had plans. We do have plans. Uh, some friend, very good friends of ours, bought uh, some property up north uh, about a year and a half ago. And we are scheduled to take our camper and go up and stay with them at their property for the weekend, leaving tomorrow. And it should, and these are friends that we used to socialize with every single weekend, Friday night and Saturday night. Um, our daughters were friends with their daughters growing up. They had two girls, we had two girls, they were the same ages. So our daughters were friends with their daughters growing up. They became very, very good friends, and we used to see them on a weekly basis, and we just don't anymore um, because life changes. I mean, we had another child, and, you know, their children moved up, and or moved up, grew up, and then they moved up north, and, um, and you know, life just changes, and we haven't had that close of a relationship, but they're still very dear friends, and you know, I'd like to be able to go and enjoy the time spent with them because we haven't seen them. We haven't seen them since last fall. Um, we went and spent a few weekends last fall at, up at their place. We took our camper and had an absolute blast, but we haven't seen them since. And so I want to be able to go tomorrow and be myself and have a good time and enjoy myself and not have this 
crushing elephant on my chest of a feeling um, that I've been having. So I'm hoping that just my just the sheer willingness that I had this afternoon to film this um, and get it out there. Maybe this is just the little impetus that I needed. Um, I'm probably not going to, you know, I will. Um, I had promised one subscriber who was asking about uh, the chickens, um, Marina, uh, was asking about the chickens and so when I'm finished fil filming the whip and chat I'm going to add a little clip on at the end I'll take you guys out and show you how they're doing they're basically adult chickens at this point they for all intents and purposes they look like adult chickens they're not laying eggs yet chickens begin to hens begin laying eggs at approximately 16 weeks of age so I figured that they will be 16 weeks on August 14th. So we've still got a couple weeks yet left before we'll start getting eggs, but they're getting close and I think we do have one rooster. So that's actually good. I'm glad that we have one rooster. Um, when we bought them, they were supposedly all sexed and we were getting all females, but you know, it's awfully difficult to sex a day old chick. And mistakes happen, and I'm, um, now if we have, you know, five out of 14 were roosters, then I might have a problem. But having one out of 14 roosters is actually, um, I'm happy, I'm happy with that. So we'll have one rooster and the rest hens, and I can't wait to start getting eggs. If you've never had farm fresh eggs from you know, free range, and, and I don't, I mean like farm chickens, not, not free range eggs from the store. They're even different. But if you've never had farm raised chicken eggs, you are missing out. They are so rich and delicious and fresh and amazing. So I can't, even your baking tastes better when you bake with, um, with eggs that are from, you know, farm raised chickens. So I'm really excited to be getting fresh eggs again. Um, not sh on average, a hen will lay, they say it, it, it depends on the breed of hen as well, but on average, you can count on six eggs a week from per hen. And we have 14 chickens, 13 of which I believe are hens. So that means we're going to be getting a dozen eggs a day or, you know, near a dozen eggs a day. I don't know what the hell we're going to do with a dozen eggs a day. We're going to have to really start um, reaching out to family and friends and um, becoming their, their egg pushers because that's going to be more eggs than we can eat. And we eat eggs. We're, we're some egg eaters, but I don't think we can eat quite that many. So, um, so that's going on. So I'm going to show you guys the chickens when we're finished up here before I wrap it up completely. And, um, I did, since I showed you guys what I had been working on, I showed you, uh, Lila's blanket, the, um, the gray and black and pink blanket that I had made for her for her birthday. Her birthday party was last Sunday and that went off without a hitch. It was lovely. Um, she's two years old now and it was the hottest, it was like 90 some degrees the day of her party. And of course her party was outside. So that part was a little bit miserable, but we made it through and, um, the party was a success. She had a great time and everyone had a great time. I helped my, I went over and helped my daughter make, um, some food uh, before the party and it was nice I hadn't seen my family my sisters or my mother um, in quite a while um, I'm not super close to the I mean we're close but I'm not close to the point where I I don't talk to my family my extended family like on a regular basis like my one sister, I don't think I'd talk to her in a couple of months. So I, um, uh, it was nice to reconnect. And I hadn't talked to my mom in a couple of months. 
So it was nice to reconnect and chit chat with everyone and get to see everyone. And um, yeah, so that was a good time. We had a good time at the party, even though it was a long, hot, hard day of work for me. How am I doing the right color? Yeah, I am. It just doesn't seem like there's no other spot in this painting where it's all grays. It, the rest of it was all blues, very, very, like 939 blue in the background. And this corner is all dark gray. See, this is all blue and this is all blue here in the corners. And this corner's all gray. So is that what it looks like in the picture? Yeah, I guess it is. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was doing the right symbol because, you know, unless <laughs> you should try this sometime at home. Just record yourself um, while you're, try to record yourself having a conversation while you're diamond painting. It's really not as easy as you would think. It's, um, at least not for me. I mean, I guess I'm a person who can't walk and chew bubble gum at the same time because it's really not as um, simple as you would think that it would be. So that was Anyway, back to the subject. That was Sunday that we had Lila's birthday party, and that was nice. And then Monday, I went out to breakfast with my dad. Um, it was his birthday on Friday. Um, no, no, no. His birthday was on Saturday. But I think I've mentioned they have a cottage up north on a lake, and it's like a Oh, it's like an association um, of all retired people that have all these, they have what they call little houses. They're like the little miniature cottages. And they, so this associate, and you know, they have the little golf carts that they drive around the, the place in. And um, they have, you know, this their big group of friends up there. So they had been up at the cottage for his birthday. So I took him out to breakfast for his birthday on Monday morning and gave him his birthday present, which was uh, Starry Night Santa um, from Diamond Art Club. I think I mentioned before um, when I showed you that completed diamond painting that that was going to be for him for his birthday. And he absolutely loved it. Jeff and I made a frame for it. And I still do need to get you guys that video of how we do the canvas wrap frames. Um, I, like I mentioned, we did film film it once. It's such a hot mess. I don't know if we should film it again or if I should just run it the way it is. I don't know. How do you guys feel about a hot mess of a video? Or would you rather have us try to refilm it and do something a little bit more professional? I honestly, Jeff was really nervous or not nervous, but he was really not wild about the idea of being a part of a video. And I honestly don't know if I could get him to do it again. So I might just have to cobble together what we've got. And that might just have to be good enough. Um, so I've been really hesitant about posting that video just because it is, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. But at least we'll give you the concept of the way we do it. And we've pretty much got it down to a science at this point of um of the way we do it and it's and it's working out really well i say we've done about 10 of them at this point and uh they turn out looking really nice i've shown i i believe i've shown that a couple of times um the finished result on a couple different videos um but i definitely will show you the what they look like when i when i get together that video and i'm going to do that I promise, I promise, because I am feeling a little bit more like myself, I'm, I'm going to get on that and get that out there this week. So you guys are probably sick of seeing nothing but unboxings from me. So uh, that's one thing that I wanted to do. And then I was thinking about doing something because I've noticed that I do have some subscribers who are fairly new to diamond painting. And I know that this might be something that would be boring to those of you who are experienced diamond painters, but might be beneficial for people who are new to diamond painting. Um, I might just do a little video about, you know, so you've bought a diamond painting, now what? You know, kind of a diamond painting for absolute beginners and 
What's the cheapest way to get started with the things that are going to make it a little bit easier? You know, we all love the custom-made hand-turned pens and the 3D printed trays and all of the accessories that you can get to make diamond painting more enjoyable. But what happens when you're just getting started and you don't know if you want to invest all of that? So I was thinking about just sharing some of you know my journey and how I got started and how I progressed through um, different stages of what I purchased that made my life a little bit easier without breaking the bank and without having to have, you know, all the, all the things. Um, because it was, you know, it was a gradual progression to get to this point of having, you know, all the things. So I might do something like a video like that. And I still, I've been having the urge to punch needle lately. And one of the things that I really wanted to do when I started my channel, and can you believe that it has already been four months that I've had a channel? I know some of you have been here with me for the, it feels like the entire four months, but it has already been four months that I have had a channel. And I am just absolutely blown away and so thankful um, and so happy at the reception that I have had I have had so many of you have been uh, so kind to me and it, I appreciate it. And I have to say, you know, having been a little down in the dumps this past week and a half, um, I've had a couple of really, really awesome comments that really helped me and helped me to um, kind of bring me out of my, out of my, little mini depression. I'm going to call it a mini depression because I, you know, I'm, I'm hoping I'm on my way up and out and it didn't, you know, it isn't going to take hold and, and hold on uh, and totally debilitate me. So, um, but thank you to those of you who have been and have always been so supportive to me and to my channel. Um, I appreciate it so much. I started my channel just with the intention of, hey, you know, this is a, this is a hobby. Or I, I have a lot of craft hobbies that I enjoy doing. And why not share them? Because, uh, you know, I, there's a lot of things that I do. And so, you know, why not share what I'm getting and um, what I'm doing with others? And so I just decided to start a channel. And I never would have expected to get to the point that I've even gotten to. Um, I'm just over 700 subscribers now. And I'm shocked and amazed and pleased to death to have that many subscribers and that many people um, who are supportive of um, my making videos. So thank you guys very, very much for that. And thank you to those of you, even though you didn't know you were doing it this past week or so, who have really helped to lift my spirits. So, um, so yeah, there's that. Um, then what else? What else? What else? So we've got, we're going, we've, the cabinets are in. Um, but see, that's not even the end of it. So the cabinets are in, but we still have to paint. So before we can put the cabinets up, we have to paint. Now you'd think this shit should all be done by now, right? I mean, this has been, has, been, has this not been the longest remodel project you've ever heard of in your life? This is the way my husband works. So... First, we got to paint because that only makes sense, right? To paint before the cabinets get put in. So he's going to buy the paint right now. And so, but even after the cabinets get put in, that we're getting granite countertops. So then they have to come and measure for the granite countertops. They can't measure for the granite countertops until after the cabinets are in. Can't put the cabinets in until after we paint. You see where I'm going here? We couldn't put the cabinets or paint before we put the new window in. We had to wait for the window to get ordered. 
you can see where this is going. It just keeps going on and on and on and on. So this has been a really long drawn out affair and I suppose that's what happens when you're doing it yourself and you're piecemealing everything um, and you know getting things as you go along rather than order it. Well we did kind of order in one big package but not really. Um, and you know we did new lighting. My husband did all of the wiring for the new lighting um, we got a new over-the-range hood, like a stainless steel um, exhaust hood that goes over the range. So now we have to get a new microwave because we can't have our microwave over the range anymore. So it looks like we're going to have to go with a pretty small microwave. Does anybody have any recommendations? This is a good idea. Does anybody, we've got 18 inches is the width that we need that we cannot exceed. We would like the best 18 inch microwave that we can find. And it has to have, this is, there's only run, one requirement that it has to have. It cannot have the kind of door that you have to push to have the door open. It has to have a pull on the door. You know what I mean? Like a handle that you actually pull the door open. So if anybody, and preferably stainless steel, or, or black, but preferably stainless just because it matched the rest of our appliances. Um, if anybody has any recommendations for a good small microwave, I would be happy to hear them um, because we've been having a hard time finding one that's that small, that is nice enough, um, you know, for what we want. We want an 1100 watt um, microwave. We don't want anything that's, you know, not powerful enough. So yeah, we're struggling a little bit with the microwave situation. Um, at this, at this point, we haven't made a decision on the microwave situation. And I don't know what it is right now about this time of year, but today is we've, we've had, as everyone has in the Northern hemisphere, We've had a heat wave going on, and it has been just, you know, ungodly hot. Well, all of a sudden today, the high today is like 72, and it is beautiful outside. It's absolutely gorgeous. We turned the central air off. We have all the windows open. It feels so nice to get that fresh air in the house. There's just something about having the windows open and having fresh air that is so much more... Um, I don't know. It just feels, and maybe that's helping me feel better. The fresh air, I don't know. But it, it just feels so much better. It smells good to have that nice outside air coming in. But I think because it's a little bit warmer in the house than it is outside, I'm not sure if this is the reason why, but I just think so. Every time somebody opens the door to go in or out, a freaking house fly comes in. So there was a fly just flying around by my canvas, if you saw it. It's not because I didn't shower or anything, because I did. I'm not attracting flies. I mean, I am attracting flies, but not because I didn't bathe. Um, just because, for some reason, they all want to come in the house right now. And it's driving me up a wall. And I don't know why they feel like they need to just buzz right in your face and just annoy the crap out of you, but they do. Is anybody else having a problem with fly, flies getting in their house? I know my daughter was talking about it too, that they, you know, because her kids are in and out of the house all the time, that flies were always getting in and it's annoying. And I don't know why they want to come in so badly. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it's all about. I'm not a bug person, but yeah, they've been wanting to come in. So you might be, um, in fact, you probably will see two videos from me today. Um, I have a company that contacted me, a company I had never heard of before, had contacted me and asked me if I would like to show, show some of their products on my channel. And um, I said yes, and uh, so I did just get that package in. And because it's a company I haven't worked with before, I wanted to get the video up 
um, as soon as I got the products and they did come in the mail yesterday. So I wanna get that video up right away, but I definitely wanted to get this video up as well and just let you guys know kind of where I've been, where my head's been at. See, look at, there he is, that stupid fly. Where my head's been at, what I've been up to, and why I haven't really been that present. And, um, and I appreciate, you know, your patience and sticking around um, more than you know. And you probably, I don't know, you might not even notice that I haven't been around because I've still been posting videos. So my, my whole big heart-to-heart, -heart, you know, might have been all for naught because you probably didn't even know. That I had been feeling this way but now you do and you know everybody's human everybody goes through rough times and I wish I could pinpoint a reason why but I have no idea just just having an off couple of weeks I guess is the only way I can describe it so um but my husband was really supportive he really would like to be working in the kitchen today but um he knew how I have been feeling and he's very understanding about it and you know he knows the struggles that I face and um, he would like to do anything he can you know to help me get over the hump and get back to my usual self so when I said that I felt like recording a video he was very very amenable to the idea of making himself scarce for a little while so that I could um, get on here and record this. And so I really, really appreciate him. He's really an amazing, amazing husband. He, um, he deals with so much. I mean, he deals with, you know, my shopping addiction, <laughs> my YouTube stuff, my crafts all over the house. Even though I have a craft room, I still have crafts all over the house. He deals with all of that just in great stride. And, um, you know, and then with my uh, emotional, mental and emotional health, he deals with all of that just like a trooper and is, you know, so patient with me um, and wants to be helpful in any way that he can. So... You know, I'm, I'm really lucky and I really appreciate him. Not to say we don't have our issues. Every couple has issues and problems and, you know, not to say that he's perfect. Um, but, you know, he's, he's a pretty good one. Uh, I don't think I will be getting rid of him anytime soon. I think I'll hang on to him for a little while. At least until we die. <laughs> It's been a while. Um, he, we've been together for, oh, we moved into this house in 2002, and we had been dating for two years at that point. So this is, so 21 and a half years we've been together, almost 20, in November it'll be 22 years that we've been together. So that's quite a, quite a while that uh you know that we've been putting up with each other as we like to say um but yeah after all that time you know you really get to know a person's quirks and um he's really good at recognizing when I'm having a hard time and when I might need a little bit of extra support or a little bit of extra encouragement and he's really good about giving that so I am really lucky in that aspect. But, oh, I didn't tell you guys about, um, I don't think I've, have I chatted with you guys since Nate and I went to Detroit? I don't know if I have or not. And tell you everything that we did? I'm pretty sure I did. If I didn't, let me know in the comments if I didn't tell you about Nate and I's little weekend in Detroit while Maddie and Austin went to Florida. And the next Whip and Chat, I will tell the stories of uh, what we did 
while we were down in Detroit because we did a few fun things. Um, and uh, but I don't want to bore you if I've already if I've already I have I have a little bit of a memory short term memory problem, and uh, so. I'm not really sure if I told you guys about it or not. Might have just mentioned it in passing, but we're thinking about possibly, um, Jeff has Monday off too, so we're thinking about possibly extending our little weekend getaway and going on a canoe, if, if I'm feeling up to it, um, Sunday going on a canoe trip. Um, I don't know if, how popular canoeing is in other parts of the country but in Michigan we have so many lakes and or I'm sorry not lakes uh, rivers and streams that canoeing is a very popular thing to do in the summer and there are a series of rivers that are very easily canoeable and there are a myriad of canoe rental places around that will take you, you, you know, park at their parking lot. They take you on a bus and drop you off up river, um, depending on how long of a trip you want to go on. Um, you can choose like a two hour, a four hour, a six hour. You can choose overnight. You can choose a multiple day trip where you camp on the side of the bank. We've done that once. It was an absolute blast. I would love to do that again. Um, it was a riot. It was so much fun. It felt like you were really like a, really an adventurer. You know, you had to just find a place on the bank of the river to pull off to camp for the night. And, you know, all you had with you were your bare essentials because you're, after all, in a canoe. Um, you couldn't carry too many creature comforts with you. So you just had your bare essentials and, uh, you know, found enough driftwood you know, or wood in the forest to make a little campfire on the riverbank. And it was just, it was really, really, the whole survival aspect of life, like, I love the show, I loved the show Survivor. That was one of my all-time favorite shows. Uh, love Naked and Afraid. I love, what is that one, um, Alone? Has anybody ever watched that show Alone, where they take the people and they have to survive by themselves in these inhospitable conditions for, I don't know, 45 days. No, I think they made it longer than that. I think, how does that contest work? I think that contest works where you just have to outlast one another. And I think one of the seasons, I want to say went over a hundred days or damn close to a hundred days. I could be wrong. On that, but I, I think it was maybe 95 days, something like that. But anyways, anything with the survival aspect of it, it really, really intrigues me. If I was a little bit more of a badass or a little bit better um, physically, in a, a better physical condition, that would be right up my alley. Uh, that's totally something that I would love to do. So when we did that overnight canoe trip, that was just something that I, I could get used. I, I I could definitely do it again. It was it was amazing. It was a blast. Of, and it wasn't that wasn't that many years ago either. That was maybe, maybe six years ago. So I was forty when we did it. So we weren't you know spring chickens or anything when we, when we did it, but um, I don't know that we would do it again. <laughs> I don't know if my these old bones could sleep on the ground anymore because obviously you're not packing an air mattress with you, you know, uh, to sleep on in a tent. You're just lying on the ground. So I'm not sure if these old bones could handle lying on the ground again. But we're thinking of extending our weekend and possibly taking a canoe trip on Sunday, which would be fun because we really, Jeff and I together, um, haven't done anything at all this summer. This weekend will be the first time that he and I will have done anything together all summer um, without Nate. Now, when we were in Detroit, uh, Nate and I stayed down there for the weekend, you know, while Maddie was in Florida. 
but um, Jeff came down, drove down on Saturday morning, and we went to the Henry Ford Museum and to the River Rouge Assembly Plant um, to see the Ford F-150s being assembled. And if that's something, if you've never, if you've been to Henry Ford in Greenfield Village, but you've never done the assembly plant tour, that is something that is definitely worth your time. And it's not that much money, but it's definitely worth your time. I found it absolutely intriguing. That was probably one of my favorite parts of the whole day at, was actually going to the assembly plant. It was just amazing to see how an assembly line works if you know if that's not something that's a part of your daily life or if you know if you've never seen that it's definitely worth it, something that's worth seeing um so yeah I would highly recommend that um I don't think I did talk about this before um so we'll we can just talk about it for a quick minute and then I'll let you guys go because it's been I've been chatting your ear off for quite a while and um I told Jeff give me 40 minutes uh to do this before he could come back in the house I don't know I just feel weird about recording and talking when he's in here he's like well would you mind if I was in here just you know working on the drywall and I'm like yeah I would I don't know I feel weird sitting here talking to myself while you're listening I don't know it just makes me feel awkward maybe I'll get over that um as my YouTube uh as I get a little bit more experienced with it maybe I'll get over that but we went to the Detroit Institute of Art Nate and I did on one day and that was really really cool they had um a Van Gogh exhibit and so we got to see some Van Goghs as well as you know their normal exhibits and they also had uh, concept cars through the ages so they had from 1950 through 2020 um, a series of concept cars cars that had never been put into production but that had been you know they had been manufactured just the concept car had been manufactured. And that was extremely interesting. Um, and Nate really enjoyed that. And then, of course, he also enjoyed the swords and um, armor and those sections of the museum as well. So uh, we did that. Then we went to a movie. Um, we went downtown. We went to Greek Town and had some dinner. We went downtown and, you know, they have those scooters that you can rent um, and, and buzz around the, the city with. So we did that for a little while. We went to Belle Isle and... Um, just drove around because my daughter goes to Belle Isle and goes to the beach there sometimes. Um, so we wanted to see what that was all about. We did that. And then we did the Henry Ford and um, River Rouge assembly plant. And so so I guess really that really that wasn't all that much to talk about, was there? <laughs> That's what we did. <laughs> um, but we had a good time. It was nice to spend some time with Nate away from his computer because he's um, he's a gamer. He's always online. That's where his friends are. And, you know, we live in the country, so it's not like he has a neighborhood where he can just pop out and play with friends. So uh, I, I don't, I, I know who he's, who he's on with. I can hear him. Um, you know, he's not sequestered off in the basement or anything. I can hear him from his room out here so I'm I'm always monitoring you know what's going on and uh, that's his social life is is are his friends on the computer and on his Xbox but it was nice to spend some time for, with him away from that and so that was really you know um, I enjoyed reconnecting with him in that way without having that technology barrier um, getting in the way and you know we were just forced to kind of 
hang out and spend time together. Um, we spent a lot of time just at Maddie's house watching. We we rewatched a bunch of episodes of The Office and Impractical Jokers, which that's one of our all time favorite shows. If you guys have never watched Impractical Jokers, it's stinking hilarious. It's definitely, I would say, PG thirteen. Um, so not, if you have little ones, probably not a great choice, but it's definitely a hilarious show if you've never seen it. And I think that's on Hulu FX. I'm not sure what it's on. I think it's on Hulu, but, um, yeah, check that out if you've never watched it. It's, it's a funny, funny show. So, all right, with that, I think I'm going to wrap things up here because it's been quite a while and um, it's been almost an hour actually. And like I said, Jeff's probably waiting to get back in here and get back working on the kitchen. And by the time I add in um, the beginning part of this video where I showed you guys what I had been working on last week, um, you're going to be well over an hour and an hour of me is probably more than enough. So I'm going to get this done and just, I probably got about another hour to go and then I'll have this one finished and then I can get another one on the books for 2021. You know, I wish, what I wish I would have done, I wish that I would have kept track of my diamond paintings that I've done like this year, like counted them, um, counted my completions, but I didn't. And, oh, I have something exciting coming. I am so excited. I finally pulled the trigger and did something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. And it is epic and monumental. It will be my magnum opus. And you guys will see it on hopefully Wednesday, possibly Thursday. So keep your eye out for that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I'll get back with you as soon as I can. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me and being patient. And I will see you guys all in my next video. Thanks. Bye, guys. I'm back. I forgot. Before I said goodbye, I forgot to tell show you guys the chicks. This is the chickas. I just threw them some bread buns some hamburger buns that's their favorite treat is bread anything bread buns or donuts or cookies even they love anything that's bread but these are the chicks they're not chicks anymore they're big big chickens i don't know if you can see the one that's right center frame that has the more red um he's he's he has red waddles and the more red head He's the guy who I think is the rooster. See how none of the rest of them really have that real red comb um, on the top of their heads? See those white guys, how it's just real, real small. Their comb is real small. And that one guy, where did he go? Where is he? I don't, oh, he's way over there now against the fence. The guy against the fence, see how his is a little bit more red and pronounced? So he's the guy I think is a rooster. He hasn't started cockadoodle doing yet. That's when you know they'll reach sexual maturity is he'll start cockadoodle doing and it's so funny when they first start because they sound like sound like teenagers going through a voice change. Oh, did you see that one? <laughs> that guy just stole the bread from the other guy. But they're so cute and they're so fun. And so that's the chicks and how they're doing. And this time I really am going to say goodbye. So I will see you guys uh, in my next video. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon. Bye.